Good afternoon. I hope you are all doing well. I'll make it quick. My name is Dr. Collins uh, A. Quartin. I am a quintuple board certified interventional cardiologist with board certification in adult internal medicine, adult echocardiography, nuclear cardiology, general adult cardiology, and interventional as well as structural um, cardiology. Um, today I'm not going to talk to you about management of cardiovascular disease. I hope that I will make it through this to uh, also address that uh, issue at another time. But for today, the reason I'm making this video is to share with you my personal experience dealing with the coronavirus diagnosis. Yes, I tested positive for the coronavirus on January 15th, last Friday, and it has been the worst one week of my life. I was privileged to be chosen by my peers to lead the authorship of a white paper on the novel coronavirus. By virtue of that, my colleagues and I did a deep literature dive to look into the disease processes of how the coronavirus came about, at least this current version, how it replicates what is being done currently. And so I have a little bit of knowledge and being a physician who also happens to be a patient and understanding the pathophysiological processes associated with the COVID um, disease, I believe humbly that it puts me in a position to be able to share a little bit of my experience from a standpoint of having the understanding to help you manage yours. So how I got diagnosed, I was just having um, some mild uh, aches and pains, some mild headache, a scratchy throat, that irritation in your throat that you can't get rid of, a little bit of runny nose, no fevers, um, and no shortness of breath. And my staff and I had been extremely diligent, paying attention to um, office hygiene, making sure that we clean up after everybody, making sure that patients uh, are not uh, seen if they don't have a mask on. We've done our best, but despite all of that, I managed to catch it. I think um, a patient may have exposed us because myself and three of my staff uh, got diagnosed almost around the same time. This disease is an evil disease. It takes a complete hold of your body. Now, the symptoms I have or what I experienced is probably not going to be similar to what you had or what you will have if you get exposed to it. It's possible that I was destined to have mild symptoms regardless. I'm relatively healthy, don't have any comorbid conditions except maybe I may be a little above my ideal body weight. Otherwise, no COPD, no asthma, no diabetes, no hyperlipidemia, no hypertension. I've been fortunate. I don't smoke. Occasional social alcohol consumption, but not every day. So relatively, I'm starting from a healthier standpoint compared to other people who may have. However, I have no doubt that the a priori knowledge I had before getting exposed put me in a position to be able to handle it. And that is why I think this video will be very um, important um, to help educate you on how to manage it if 
you have that misfortune of uh, getting exposed to it and so I will still make a strong recommendation that make sure you are wearing your mask make sure you are listening to your health experts um, make sure you are socially uh, distant except when you are around people your close-knit group family who you know are not infected but every time somebody steps out of the house or somebody gets exposed to the outside um, environment it's an opportunity for them to bring it back in so you still have to remain very vigilant so how did I manage mine as I stated before this disease is evil it takes a complete hold of your body diagnosis day one on Saturday and through the weekend I will wake up and it will feel like I did a 12 round bout of boxing with a Zuma Nelson or worse yet Iron Mike Tyson my body ached from the scalp of on my head to the sole of my feet everything hurt I mean I hurt in places that I never thought was possible and this is not an exaggeration when you wake up in the morning you feel frozen getting out of bed is a chore your joints hurt your muscles hurt and there is this sort of pain behind your eyes even blinking your eyes hurt your nose is stopped and so you can't take a deep breath in and out you have to do mouth breathing but not to sidetrack what coronavirus does is that it leads to the creation of a lot of thick mucus so when it starts in your nostrils or in your sinus passages it creates this very very thick mucus when people talk about the fact that they lose their sense of smell and taste this is why because in your at the back of your tongue in the oropharynx and the nasal pharynx where your smell receptors are this thick secretions becomes like glue it's like a sealant it seals over and it dries so quickly just as the mucus is uh, generated it starts to dry out and so it layers over those surfaces and be seals in the receptors and that is why you are losing your sense of smell at the back of your throat where and the, the, the back of your tongue where the taste receptors are the taste buds are on your tongue this thing also layers over it and so based on my a priori knowledge knowing how this virus behaves and knowing having seen all of the other things going on on social media it kind of makes sense I have also seen firsthand how patients who go on ventilators are not making it the reason they are not making it is because if you assume a patient in a hospital bed on a ventilator laying supine in other words facing the ceiling they are on a breathing machine if you've ever seen a ventilator the suction tube is this little bitty tube that we push down and depending on where the ET tube is pointing that is the only place you can suction and nine times out of ten when you suction nothing really comes out so if you have coronavirus and you get put on a vent and you are having all of this thick glue like secretions these secretions literally layers over your small bronchial airways like the tiny little bit of space where the gas exchange takes place and it bakes it in if you've ever seen a honeycomb if you've harvested a honey if you've ever harvested a honeycomb 
and you look at those hexagons which actually houses the honey that is how I want you to imagine the mucus layering over those small tiny airways leading to the alveoli where the gas exchange takes place and so if, so if you are laying down and all of this glue like mucus lays over all of that place then it takes away that part of the lung away from gas exchange activities so your oxygenation drops and if it's layering over that if you cannot oxygenate then you can also not ventilate so you have a ventilation and an oxygenation problem so in an attempt to help you oxygenate we increase your FiO2 to put more oxygen concentration into your lungs but we can't get it there unless we keep the little bitty lung tissue we have left we put a positive pressure in there that is where the peep comes in we increase the peep which is the positive and respiratory pressure we increase that to help it stay open but as we do that it creates barotrauma which is more inflammation and as your body responds to the inflammation that milieu of inflammatory response the interleukins all of that leads to generation of reactive oxygen species which causes more damage and then as this glue like substance mucus dries out it helps to stiffen your whole entire lung architecture and that is why our patients are not doing well I'm not a pulmonary or critical care um, physician but I've come to know enough about this disease to know how it's taking us out and so knowing all of this I decided that I was going to do my best to help get out that mucus now you know that if I kick back my head and I put water down my nose I'm going to choke I'm going to choke myself that will be tantamount to putting your head under water and trying to breathe you will you 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 will um, drown however we know that the lungs are good for gas exchange that is what God created it for that is the organ responsible for gas exchange therefore if I want to get the moisture down there then I have to get it down there in a gas form in a gaseous form state which is what the water excuse me the water vapor is and as you can tell I'm making my way to the steam therapy and how it helped me significantly in my situation so knowing all of that out there I know I can't put water down my nose so the benefits of the vapor therapy that you've heard so much about is because it helps take the moisture that you need to loosen up this mucus so that you can expectorate it or bring it out and that is what I did now I've seen a lot of videos with people talking about I'm putting neem tree and I'm slicing up this and I'm slicing up that I really don't think there is any special medicinal benefit to putting A or B into your boiling water not that I know of so just plain steam plain water will suffice I did however use different things the first thing I did was I boiled the water in a pan trying to be extremely safe and I put it in a bucket then I sat in the bathtub on the edge of the bathtub put my blanket over um, my comfort over, over my head stirred the water and inhaled the steam it was very helpful but it died out very quickly within 10 minutes the water was turning cold and I couldn't generate the steam 
So what I decided to do was then leave the boiling water on the stove so that it can have that constant heat and then I'll be able to get a prolonged consistent um, heat or steam generation into my nostrils and I have absolutely no doubt that the steam therapy is in a large part responsible for my very mild cause so far once again I'm only day eight out of my diagnosis but I have no doubt that the steam therapy has played a significant role and so far my T max my maximum temperature recorded was on the day of diagnosis of 100.3 that's it ever since then I have been afebrile I've also not had any significant respiratory issues and <clears throat> my able um, pulse oximetry has been with me I walk around like uh, a referee with it around my neck and every time I feel like I'm struggling a little bit I'll check my pulse oximetry now that is important I know not everybody is gonna have a pulse oximeter but you are your own pulse oximeter if you are struggling to breathe compared to the way before you will know and you will need to seek attention and so I've been managing and gauging my symptoms all throughout unfortunately but one thing that I've not been able to get rid of is the myalgias or the muscle aches and pains and so let me show you how I did my steam therapy now I have to put out a disclaimer this is not the end or be all and what might have helped me may not help you because I'm not coming to the game with the same set of circumstances as you are but I'm only sharing my experiences with you to let you know that it helps and by getting the steam down to your passages lower deep down you are able to add the moisture there when the vapor gets down into your lower airways it condenses and then adds the moisture you need to help moisturize or loosen up the phlegm now you are not going to see the benefit right away after you do the steam therapy it takes time 20 30 minutes sometimes an hour after your treatment but the most important thing is that you are getting more moisture down into your airways where ordinarily you wouldn't have and I know this because on day one I felt the mucus in my chest but I still could not bring it out and the more I try to clear my throat the more I try to bring it out my my chest started hurting to the extent that I had to avoid doing that to avoid the chest pain but after I started the steam therapy it made it easier the benefit of the grounded ginger and all of that is to just to create that aroma and irritant which when um, uh, when that irritation hits your nasal passages and your lower airways it helps to induce that cough reflex and then that coughing then helps to bring up and I'm telling you when that mucus eventually comes out it's rusty colored and if you feel it it feels like gorilla glue so imagine all of that thick glue like mucus sitting there in your airways with no way to come out and then you can start to understand why people go into respiratory distress if they don't manage it well and so here we go So, with um, 
um, a few uh, disclaimers. Make sure you are not setting yourself on fire. I take no responsibility with you setting yourself on fire. <laughs> Let's get it straight. Also, make sure you are not passing out. There's a lot of steam. Now, I know a lot of people are putting, um, doing the kettle and shooting, ejecting a column of steam. That is dangerous because you are concentrating a whole bunch of steam and you can literally uh, cause significant burn into your nostrils. You have to generate sort of um, steam like that from a bowl, from a pan. Um, like I said, if you put it in a bucket, it doesn't take long and it cools down. So it's not that effective. So make sure, now this is an electric stove, so I don't have any live flames. But if you are using a gas stove, you could potentially, uh, because you have live flame, you could catch the cloth on fire and then it creates a, um, a different problem. So please don't do that. Now, if that's all you have, that's all you have. And you have to be very smart about it. So with the steam coming, I bring my comforter to be able to capture a good amount of it. I bring my comforter and um, I tent over my head. And I do the treatment for two to five minutes. I step back to take some fresh air and I, I go back and do it again. And almost instantaneously, your nose will start to run um, and uh, you start to get the benefit. Once again, I have ginger and lemon and um, garlic in here. And the reason is to just to create that aroma um, and also that irritant, which will irritate uh, my lower air passages and um, help me cough. Sometimes when I cough initially after the treatment, nothing comes out, which is understandable. You haven't had enough time to add the moisture uh, to loosen it up yet. But the irritation is what creates that cough reflex. And um, eventually uh, it comes out. Sometimes two hours after, after my treatment, that is when I start to feel that the flame is getting loose and then I can you know, get up, go to the bathroom and then expectorate it. Um, so um, this is the version. Okay, I've also used um, a vapor rub. Okay, I take a quick uh, scoop with, a, uh, with the back of um, a spoon or a fork, just a little bit of a scoop. I drop it in there on the top when I run out of ginger before um, I can have someone drop some off for me. I do that. Now, if you look at the bottle, the ingredients has camphor, eucalyptus oil, and all of that. Um, those are just to create the aroma, but I don't think it has any sort of um, medicinal effect purposely targeting a virus. It only creating that aroma um, that is soothing. Okay, so don't uh, get um, overboard with it. And I'll also show you some additional sort of what a counter therapy, which has been very helpful. So, um, with my comforter, once again, making sure that you are not catching yourself on fire, I come in and I tent over. Okay. Now, with that, not a whole lot of, of the vapor is escaping. I open my mouth. <coughs> there you go, right there. <coughs> in and out, you breathe in and out. Don't go too close to the to the pan. The lower you go, the hotter the steam is. Okay, and you can burn yourself. Just use common sense and just be reasonable and not hurt yourself. Don't cause too much. That don't cause damage. More damage. Okay, so open your mouth and breathe in and out. <coughs> you 
and clearly feel the vapor reaches down your lungs. <coughs> Slow deep breaths in, put your mouth open, and then you exhale. <coughs> that is how you know it's working. If you get the vapor down there. That was about three four minutes of treatment and all of a sudden my nose is already i'm sorry i don't mean to gross you out but i wanted you to witness how effective it helps <laughs> and if you couldn't hear I was literally talking out of my head because my nose was so stuffed. Okay, and you can appreciate how it makes you perspire as well. And I can take... <coughs> Excuse me. That is how you know it's effective. Because now you are able to get that vapor in there. And it helps to irritate. I'm not expectorating anything from below. But the addition of that moisture through the water vapor is going to help loosen it up. And that is how. Um, so I treat myself mostly twice a day. Occasionally I throw one in there during midday like I'm doing now. I treated myself already in the morning. Now I'm doing um, this afternoon and I'll do one before I go to sleep. But it helps. It clearly helps to add the moisture um, to help you uh, drain your nasal um, passages, your sinuses, um, and also add the, <coughs> excuse me, the moisture down there. So I'm gonna do another treatment. Okay, once again, be careful um, not to set yourself on fire. Okay, and don't pass out, okay. <clears throat> if you just want to get effective upper respiratory sort of nasal treatment you breathe in and out with your mouth closed and taking in the vapor through your nostrils and allow the, allow the heat to get up in there so that your paranasal sinuses that is where mostly the virus um, sets up uh, sharp initially so <coughs> <coughs> people have asked if you don't have the virus is it worth it to do the treatment I will say prophylactically it does absolutely because that is where it starts and like I said before um, that is how it enters your respiratory system so, um, if you got inoculated with a small viral load and you are prophylactically doing this, you could kill the virus before it even set up shop and start spreading. So the vapor therapy is highly effective, um, but also how well you do is a function of how strong your immune system is. And so in addition to this vapor therapy, let me also show you my mini pharmacy. <clears throat> so, apart from doing the homeopathic stuff, one thing that I've always done, I've also done, is also to exercise my lungs. So I use, I purse my lips around my straw. The benefit of exercising through a straw is that it helps you control your inspiration 
and your expiration and you are slowly able to take in the air to help expand your lungs once again i do that in and out before and after my vapor therapy to help to exercise my airways those little alveoli where the exchange takes place i exercise it so that it's not laying dormant okay um there is a little bit of muscle <coughs> Um, and so you exercise it to keep it stronger um, and to make sure that those airways are staying open okay because at baseline they are not collapsed they, they have air in there and so they stay open and that's how that has been helpful okay so <clears throat> that is my lung exerciser of course If you had an incentive uh, spirometer at home, which is what we give the patients at bedside to make sure that they don't get pneumonia in a hospital bed, that is what you, you could use. But not everybody has uh, medical grade uh, spirometer at home. Um, now, other medications I've used is also mucinex. Mucinex is an expectorant. Okay, so. If I didn't have COVID and I had like the cold, the flu, and I was stuffed, the fast, the fast max daytime and uh, nighttime tablets, and that helps to also uh, loosen up the phlegm. Okay, so I have been very generous using that. I'm taking uh, full dose aspirin, 325. There is a lot of information out there and evidence talking about how there is a coagulopathy or clotting disorder associated with this disease process. And I, I personally saw that on January 25th weekend, as well as the New Year's weekend, I was on acute heart attack call, and I personally treated 10 patients who presented over two weekends with acute heart attacks, massive heart attacks. The youngest one was a 26-year-old black male. 26 years old until today he remains the worst amount of blood clots in a in a coronary artery that i've ever seen and that patient had covid we actually didn't know he had covid but we go into every case dressed up like we are going for battle with appropriate um, protection so we were not scared that we had inadvertently exposed ourselves but that 26 year old gentleman had a massive amount of clots in his coronary arteries i sucked out as much as i could and then stented um what was left in place to reopen the vessel and get him flow back to his heart and he survived now Clot formation starts with platelet adhesion, okay, and then it leads to white uh, platelet plugs, which then eventually uh, leads to fibrin uh, formation and cross-linking, okay. So coagulation uh, happens because of platelet uh, dysfunction. And so when the platelet sticks and starts the process, then it can lead to that. So if you have an antiplatelet, which prevents that pathophysiological process, then you cannot have, at least that is the expectation that you cannot have that. So that is the reason why I take aspirin. And that is the purpose of me taking that. People also take anticoagulant now this is an antiplatelet but people also take anticoagulants like um, Eloquis or Zarelto um, they sort of arrive at the same uh, destination but they go through different um, processes or pathways I chose to take aspirin um, to help me stave off any um, uh, coagulation issues okay so that's why I take an aspirin zinc is needed as a supplement okay uh, to help boost your immune system and that is what i have as well so i take the zinc i also take a lot of vitamin c okay 
um, I take uh, vitamin D okay I've been loading up on that and I also take some uh, Tylenol extra strength Tylenol this has been maybe the uh, workhorse in helping uh, stave off the fevers and uh, helping me take off um, take care of uh, my muscle uh, aches and pains I have been using this very generously of course um, too much of Tylenol can cause liver damage okay so you have to use that with a lot of uh, discretion and a lot of common sense as well all right <clears throat> I have used some vapor rub that is from for topical uh, rub it over your chest um, around my throat my neck um, and give that soothing relief um, I've tried to stay away from non steroidals this is a leave okay I have tried to stay away from that because there's initial literature talking about a leave and all non steroidal anti-inflammatory medications are detrimental okay I decided not to take the um, <clears throat> excuse me the uh, steroids but I did take the azithromycin which I finished my pack it was 250 milligram tablet the first day I took two tablets day one and then following that um, so I took the two initial tablets and then following that I took 250 milligrams every day uh, day two through uh, five I finished that course and I believe that also contributed to me not uh, um, getting any sort of super infection um, <clears throat> and then any sort of immune booster that you can have uh, immune support additional vitamin C dietary supplement um, I have been using sparingly um, the cold and flu uh, to also give me more coverage for the uh, the aches and pains and the um, sinus aches that comes with uh, this disease process um, occasionally when I've had sore throat okay um, I will peel my ginger um, peel off uh, the covering and then uh, have my honey um, then I just uh, chew it um, to also give me so, some soothing um, relief but one thing I've stayed away from um, of course I have my Bengay also for the aches and pains I mean you have to be aggressive with this disease um, and so that is how I have managed to stay um, on top of uh, management it may be good for you um, and so I decided to share my experience uh, with you um, and I tell you this is an evil disease um, I'm not trying to create any sort of conspiracy here when I use evil it's in the sense of it's bad um, I'm not uber religious to think that this is some devilish thing going on it's, it's evil that's all I can say in a sense that is bad it's a bad 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 disease and this is not something that you wish even on your worst enemy so um, I know it's long um, but if these experiences that I shared with you helps you manage yours or helps to prevent um, your exposure then it will have done its job so uh, just to summarize um, make sure you are doing your vapor therapy at least twice minimum morning and evening is it important or is it even necessary to do it prophylactically I will say it is because getting that steam and that vapor up your nostrils if you've been seeded before you even manifest you could end up killing the virus particles uh, before it sets up shop you know to spread through the rest of your body so the steam therapy works but also make sure that you are also taking the antipyretics um, to make sure you are not having fevers using as generous amounts of um, sort of topical um, ointments as possible to rub off that joint pain and muscle pain 
Now you are going to wake up feeling like you are frozen in place and you cannot stay still. Do not be tempted to lay in bed all day. The disease is going to get you. You have to stay active. But by all means, limit your exposure to other people. Do not go out there and be careless and spread uh, the virus. Um, so, good luck and I hope you do not get it. Feel free to share the video freely. God bless you.